Hey folks, this is Jake Davis with an on-the-fly review for you. I'm going to try to make this one quick because i got to wake up my wife so she can get me a ride to work. <laughs> um, uh, today I want to talk about Fantasy Island, released last weekend, directed by, from Bloomhouse Pictures, directed by uh, <coughs> Jeff Wadlow and starring Michael Pena, uh, Lucy Hale, Maggie Q, Michael Rooker, um, uh, uh, and it's Ali Emanuel. Uh, it's in some other actors in there. Um, like, uh, Kim Coates has a small role. Always great to see that weird, weird looking son of a bitch. <coughs> um, this is, this is fascinating to me anyway. This is a horror movie adaptation of what was a fantasy melodrama from the late 70s starring Ricardo Montalban. Uh, the great Ricardo Montalban. What a great ham he was. Uh, uh, it was basically where, uh, Rich people or people come to this island, uh, indulge in their wildest fantasy, whether it be, you know, what it was always various things. It was, it was the guest star of the week kind of show, and Ricardo was more or less the genie, Mr. Rourke. Uh, now, I remember having to watch a few episodes of this show as a kid. I can't remember who the grown-up was necessarily was watching it, but I hated it. <laughs> I hated Fantasy Island, man. I really hated that show. And I know they tried to reboot it, maybe in the late 90s or early 2000s with Malcolm McDowell. And I didn't know that, that just went nowhere. Uh, so, you know, with Michael Pena, let's just first off, I don't know if I've addressed this before, but Michael Pena is a national treasure. I love Michael Pena, he's absolutely great. Always is so likable, so charismatic. So when I found out not only is he playing Mr. Rourke, but playing Mr. Rourke as a villain, I was just like, how's that even going to work? You know, Mr. Rourke was... Played by Ricardo Maltaban, who everybody loved. And now he's played by Michael Pena, who everybody loves. <laughs> How are you going to make this guy unlikable? Um, anyhow. Uh, yeah, it's basically the it's basically just Fantasy Island. And I got to say, I uh, I kind of love this movie. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's, it's awful. Oh, it's bad. I mean, everyone but Michael Pena is, like, really, really stiff. Uh, all the dialogue is just bad. Uh, it's cheesy and, and creepy, I mean cringy, and not, I mean creepy is in like the, uh, not really creepy, it's just not really scary, but I gotta just tell you, man, I enjoyed this movie, uh, I had fun, I thought they, 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 they had an idea, and whether or not it was a good idea, they made this idea work, <laughs> they pulled it off, um, you know, back in the, uh, well, the, the well, the whole setup here is uh, five Americans show up to this island to spend a fantasy vacation. Uh, their wildest fantasy comes true. They don't really quite realize that it is literal. And once the fantasy begins, they have to see the fantasy through. Now, w one thing I do like about how we introduce our five characters and then they branch off in their stories. And it almost, it really does feel very episodic. Like you're seeing four different stories cut back and forth, going back to the land, letting the stories flesh out. And I really enjoyed that. It's not until towards the end of the second act, they all back, come back to tie in together to reveal a big twist. Um, and to, to be honest, that much of it so much I really didn't like. Because after you get to the big twist and then the big payoff, it's just over like that. I mean, it is a very anticlimactic film. Um, and the... Uh, uh, and, and like I said, the, the horror didn't really land for me, and the dialogue's bad. But I enjoyed this movie because I thought it was... I, I understood watching it. I'm kind of watching an experiment. Because you see, look, uh, adapting the melodrama cop shows, like, it just worked so well for drag... In, into broad comedy, worked so well for Dragnet, Starsky and Hutch, uh, 21 Jump Street, and there might be another one I'm thinking of. But they kind of burnt it out with movies like Chips and Baywatch. And that's another thing, man. I love Michael Pena. But the fact that he's now played both Eric Estrada and Ricardo Multiband, I got to say, you know, is the, is, the mach is the machismo factor been lessened or something? I mean, like, the standard seems a little... I, it's, it's been lowered. I'm just saying. Um, the machismo bar, I guess. But, uh... Um, I understood that we were, this was kind of an experiment, trying to make horror movies out of these, uh, trying to make comedies. And when those got burned out, let's try horror movies with this. And uh, even though, I mean, the concept is ridiculous. I mean, the concept is bizarre, and the execution is definitely ridiculous. 
but I, I damn if I did not enjoy the ride. I had a lot of fun watching this really bad movie, and you know, just sometimes, you no, know, I, I don't want to shit on something like a lot of people like Get Out, but to me, I thought Get Out was just kind of a boring movie. I, I preferred Us. Um, I thought it was a better movie. It just made them because it, because the scares are more frequent. You know, you sense the danger. I, I I mean, literally, I'm sitting there watching Get Out the whole time. It's like, oh my God, this guy figures out something's wrong. I think my daughter's crying. Oh, I'll wrap this up. Uh, I'm gonna give the movie three stars, and I say yes. I kind of, even though this movie, I don't know how. I, I didn't really check what's doing at the box office. I know just Sonic the Hedgehog is slaughtering everything else right now. But, uh, I say dust them off. Try these ideas out. This might be a really fun route to go down. I would love to see a horror movie adaptation of, uh, Quantum Leap. Or my favorite Martian or <laughs> Touched by an Angel. <laughs> I had fun watching this movie that had no reason to be even watchable. Anyhow, I'm Jake Davis. Three stars. Three stars just for fun's sake. I'm Jake Davis, and I will catch you on the fly.